Hey everyone, it's still me. So, I'm probably just gonna try to one take this, make it easy. This is a video about builds. I get asked a lot of questions on stream about how to build characters, how I'm doing so much damage, how my score attacks are so high. So, at a baseline level, this game works on a few systems, very similar to the original game Grand Blue Fantasy, which is Gotcha, which I also play. So, at a baseline level, this game, you want to have damage cap up. Most people at this point probably are aware of damage cap, how it works, why you want it. Obviously, you want to have max damage cap. This is easily achievable by having four damage cap ups, plus a terminus weapon, which has five on it, which gives you a whole of 65, which caps your damage cap. And these are self-explanatory, mandatory slots for any build. War Elemental. This is also another mandatory slot. I do not know if there is a War Elemental Plus where it can potentially have substats as well, like most other things that are like 5 plus and so on. I don't know. I haven't gotten another one, so I, I don't know yet. Currently, my assumption is that War Elementals do not have a plus yet. This remains to be seen. But yes. War Elemental essentially takes your damage and adds another 20% on top of the final damage you do. So, for instance, with Ni Minor Maya, if I do not have War Elemental on, I should be doing about 43,514 damage. So, yep, 43,514. That is my damage cap, both on crit and non-crit, as you can see. Now, if I were to add War Elemental back, if you take this value, it should be about 52216, maybe? Yep, 52216. Crit and non crit. It's capping at all times. If you take 52216 and multiply it by 0.2, you will receive 43, you know, the difference. It's a 20% difference, right? You'll receive the same value of 43,514. It is about a 20%, give or take, like minor decimal points of percentages. So just on average, it's 20%. Actually, the calculations tend to come out to a little more. They come out to like 20, you know, 3, 8, it just kind of fucking depends. So either way, that is non-negotiable. It makes it so you are always on superior element. And being superior element in terms of Grand Blue, it mean like, this is effectively just a Seraphic modifier. If you play Grand Blue Fantasy, you know what Seraphic is, you know what this is, it's simple to understand. For those who don't play it, this essentially works a little differently, but ultimately it is simply a final damage multiplier. It is all you have to worry about. It means you're always on element, so you're always dealing advantageous damage to the enemy. Which is good. So yeah. All you need to know, this is a flat 20% damage. No matter what you are doing, it adds 20% damage. This is a guaranteed absolute slot in. Uh, awakenings. I think a lot of characters uh, rely on their awakening slash soul skills to like do a lot of good things. Not every character needs all of them. Like, Jita definitely doesn't need both of them. I don't think this attack defense one is that valuable. So say, for instance, you have... You don't have Fearless Soul, but you have, like, Fearless Drive. I can get to it. Fearless Drive, right? Fearless Drive, Potion Hoarder. You know, you don't need the other part. You don't need the other portion. So you can always, if your character doesn't have two good skills, you can take one and then hope to get a good substat on it from transmarbling, right? So, just an example. I think these are generally pretty mandatory. Either one or the double. It just depends on your character and which you play. It usually makes them smoother, makes them do a little more damage, it makes their mechanics a little easier. It just depends what they do. Either way, one of the skills you're probably going to want, so I believe this is a mandatory slot. Supplemental damage is another damage stat we have in Grand Blue Fantasy. However, in this game, it works more like Echo from Grand Blue Fantasy. 
So if you're a grand blue player, this is essentially Echo. You know what it is. Good. While it says supplemental, and definitely it's easier for a non grand blue player to understand it as supplemental rather than Echo. Basically, your normal attacks now have a second hit. And it's an Echo of your normal attack, right? Which is why it's called Echo. And it's just another 20%. So if you multiply this by 20%, you get the 10,443. And that's what comes up as the second number. It is very good because it works similarly, you would think, to War Elemental. It's just a 20% damage increase. But War Elemental increases the final damage of the supplement as well. So War Elemental takes every instance of damage you do after the calculations of attack versus defense, after all the multipliers, and then it adds 20% on top. This is obviously very good. So, supplemental. Sorry, one take in this, like I said. The supplemental makes it super... The supplemental is super good. Sorry. <laughs> Either way, Basically, every hit you do will now deal a 20% echo of the damage you just dealt. This works very, very well in tandem with things like Cascade, where Cascade lowers skill cooldowns by up to an amount based on the attack used. And it also procs from the hit of supplemental damage. So if you're going like, if you want to have like a permanent um, God Might need, you can actually have permanent God Might, assuming you have 100% supplemental damage. So you have 100% supplemental, you basically just take that and you run with it. Because it also procs Cascade and on hit effects. However, you don't really need the three the three is just for the 100%, but honestly, even with one, it's pretty good. 42, if you don't have Sigil Booster on a weapon, it's 40%. It's almost a 50-50. It's still very, very strong to have, just because it's every now and then you're going to be doing 20% more damage on everything, which is very, very good. However, if you want optimal damage, optimal stuff for certain builds, like Cascade builds, you're going to want three to make sure it always procs. So it's just an extra 20% echo, which procs on hit effects as well. Very strong, very good, mandatory for doing damage. This leaves the last three slots. The last three slots need to generally be some type of attack boosting slots, because while we have a lot of attack, if you look in the bottom left, the 25,000, we don't have a lot of attack percent. So we need attack percent to help boost our damage. So stamina at endgame, you're basically dead or at 100, unless you're playing a character like Boss Saraga Gone to Goza, where you might run Enmity Garrison, but that's like a whole different thing. So for the most part, most characters are probably just going to want stamina because you're going to be at 100. If not, you're probably dead. And if you're not, at, if you're not dead, you're going to be healing up to full. Like I said, with exceptions, of course, depending on the character. So, Stamina, easy slot in, 51% attack boost. Tyranny, great slot in. The HP subtraction may suck, however, this plays into tandem with something called Catastrophe on Terminus weapons, which I'll get into. And then, Tyranny, Stamina is a very, very strong combination for attack boost. And then, for Narmaya's sake, I run Quick Charge because she has a charge attack, much like Eo or Cagliostro, or a lot of characters have charge attacks. So it's always very nice to reduce charge time, and it gives a little extra attack boost on top of it. Now, the reason for Tyranny is that on Terminus weapons, which is the endgame weapons you will be farming most of your time for, you get Catastrophe. It's an attack boost plus a 100% damage cap, only when your health is below 45,000. Now, this puts you in one-shot range for a lot of things. 
which is why I say you're either dead or at max. So to get that HP value, you can pair Tyranny with something like Aegis, right? So if you don't have Tyranny, but you have Aegis, my health is over the 45k. However, with Tyranny plus Aegis, I have higher health than if I didn't have Aegis, right? Like if I had neither, I have 37k. But if I have both, I have 41k, which is 4k under and it's a little extra leeway to play with and so on. So it's a little extra comfortability. You don't need to do this, but it definitely helps. So Tyranny Aegis is a very, very good way just to manage your health to be below the 45k to get the super massive stat boost of Catastrophe. You have to meet this requirement. It is, it is absolutely needed. Then that is basically it in terms of damage. If you only strictly care about maximum, maximum damage, you would add Glass Cannon onto this. Glass Cannon, it gives you another attack boost, but it also gives you 30 cap up. This is how you can reach the maximum level of cap up in the game. However, every hit you take, you become dizzy. But a lot of people will probably view this if you're in any game. That's not that bad because if you get hit, you're dead anyways, right? So it's a very, very good way to increase your damage. So in the case of... Let me just throw these on. I guess I forgot to make a loadout with them. If I throw on Tyranny and Stamina, my cap is now the highest cap it can possibly be in the game currently at 55,096 for Naru. But yeah, that is if you want super ultimate maximum damage. I personally forego crit rate because if I do crit rate specifically without crit damage, your non-crit will not cap. However, you can obviously have a 100% crit build. You can easily get 100% crit by just doing overmasteries potentially, right? You can overmastery 20% crit rate. You can get crit rate on a MB on your weapon. You can do what you please with crit rate. Whether you go crit or not, entirely up to you. Personally, I value just always hitting cap. And always hitting cap is just made easy with tyranny, stamina, and another like slight attack boost. However, if I'm playing online and I'm not going strictly, strictly for like optimal damage, I'm just soloing something like no AI, I tend to run something like this linked together. Very, very, very good slot. It has four stats and it just helps the entire party. You all deal more damage, you get more link time, and link time in this game, very, very broken. If you want a bit more comfortability or utility, obviously you can just drop things like drop two of the subs and then you have five slots to play with. Your build is still pretty deterministic, I think no matter what. Four cap, war Ellie, one of your sigils for either awakening or a single skill plus a sub, and then at least one sub damage, because you're just leaving damage on the floor if you're not running at least one. And then you can play with your build. Like you can have really like comfy builds like this. One sub, doesn't matter, but you can have Link together. It has Potion Hoarder. You can have Stronghold, which is like stamina, but for defense, right? Which also has like a quick cooldown, which lets me change like this for steady focus. And instead of my quick charge of having steady focus, I have guts. So I have a lot of really defensive, like comfortable things like Potion Hoarder, broken. Guts, very helpful. Auto Revive, very helpful. Steady focus, very helpful for characters that have either charge attacks or, you know, just in general because it gives you a little extra defense. If you're a character that is in Stout Heart a lot of the time, instead of Steady Focus, you can always get um, Steel Nerves, 
assuming you roll it on like a sub or if you somehow want to slot it in yourself you can get steel nerves which reduces the damage taken by a percentage while you're in stout heart so a character like vasaraga Eid, very 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 strong with this because you're just always taking like up to 15 percent reduced damage these will probably have it maxed if you're using it anyway so 15 percent less damage very very big damage cut but you can see the skeleton of the build is still here cap ups war ellie sub awakening damage stats managing my health with tyranny plus aegis quick charge for utility plus damage linked together is a insane value slot always run this if you're playing online it's so good potion hoarder for comfortability if i could get supplementary five plus with a sub stat like a good sub stat that'd be really great but none of the sub five pluses i have are good i only have two and they're bad the slot literally whatever you want you know aegis you want somehow for some reason want 3k more health still under the 45k for catastrophe but you want that little extra defensive maybe you want garrison maybe you want literally anything it's up to you right maybe you want another link together double link together it's even better maybe you're one life on the line and you don't need quick charge you're not a quick charge character so you can run something like life on the line and then just make sure you have potion hoarder because you can't be healed by allies and then you have another utility slot right it's very it's very free form what you do with these last slots but basically you want to have these slots and then you need to have stats that help you cap your damage because otherwise your damage is going to look like this and it's not a good look right so your damage is everywhere it's not very high damage cap means nothing without the actual attack boosting stats to make it worth and once you get to end game you might think oh yeah i need attack i'm just gonna stack attack power attack power is very very hard to work with especially because you need a lot of attack power investment to actually get to the 2k attack at the end and even then it's only base attack so for instance say i go from an ascension weapon non-awaken to a terminus weapon fully awakened i gain 5000 attack that is a lot of attack let's say i put on a build right so let's say i have a full build with an ascension weapon non-awaken i have 10k attack almost that's pretty good however i gain 15000 more attack from equipping my terminus base attack doesn't mean very much when it is so ultra saturated it would be less than a 10 percent gain as opposed to simply adding attack up percentage you know attack percent is much more valuable when your attack base attack is saturated and vice versa because there is diminishing returns if you stack too much of either so it's a pretty simple like way to build in this game it's lacking a lot of variety hopefully they introduce better sigils like sigil sixes when the fall raid comes out next month or just you know they can do a lot of things but as of now this is pretty much a basic template you with tyranny stamina four cap war ellie sub and then an awakening you have a couple extra slots to play with you can change these for whatever damage you want but tyranny aegis is very good to give you a little extra health while staying under 45k so you're kind of left with these four slots to get a bit more attack boost on top of the sub stats that you may personally prefer like to have like if i'm just on my triple sub damage to guarantee it on naru i don't have guts i don't have potion hoarder and those are really comfortable stats to have when playing online so i might just run a build like this with link together because it's so good even if you're like, if you're running online honestly take out one of the subs run link together very very strong and then i have like potion hoarder and if i really really somehow want to play super safe careful comfortable and i don't really care about damage because honestly we do way too much damage even without perfect damage builds it allows more freedom to have like guts right 
I also have Stronghold. You know, obviously I have max quick cooldown and a near max cascade for cooldown reduction. You know, you can kind of just slot in whatever you want after you have the attack boosts you need to make use of all your cap ups. It's pretty simple. There's a lot of lack of variety. I could honestly go into a lot more detail and make a very, very long video. I'm trying to condense this as much as possible just to be, you know, consumable very easily. If you want a much deeper explanation on this stuff, let me know, honestly, or come to my stream when I'm playing the game. Just ask me questions. I've been playing it a lot. I really do love this game. I think Sky Games has something really great on their hands with it. Whether they continue to update after the third patch, we'll see. Uh, I stream most days, generally five, potentially seven days a week over on Twitch. You can follow me there. The link will be down below. Uh, if you want to see things like, I don't know, maybe guides, full solos, like no AI, parsing rotations, because like I do a lot of that on stream. Just testing rotations, testing builds, doing stuff with like viewers. So, yeah, feel free to check any of that out if you like. Let me know what you want to see. Drop by, say hi, whatever it may be. If you want a more in depth guide of stats, sigils, builds, I can definitely make one, but it's going to be very long. So, yeah. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Have a good day, morning, night wherever you are. Yeah. Bye.